शर्मणीयदर्शन मंदहासुचिराननाबुज पूजित सुरनरोतमुदा धर्मनंदनम विचित धर्मनंदनम विचित श्रीगणश्याम महाराज ने जय और बिलौर घनश्याम महाराज पाथ में कटो लिब्रेशन पूछे पाठ गुरु जी एंड ऑल ऑफ डिट इज जय स्वामी नारायण इन भक्त चिंता में सदगुरु ने स्कूलानंद स्वामी डिस्क्राइब हाउ सम संतोष एंड ड्यूटीज एज वेल एज सम फीमेल ड्यूटीज इवन सम चाइल्ड ड्यूटीज experience divinity in our satsang a divine presence of bhagwan swami narayan how they experience in their life describe so many incident of at the time of bhagwan swami narayan as, as well as after that time also now today in 143 Three chapter of Bhagavad Gita, Mr. Sadguru Sri Nishkuranand Swami read down some incident happen in the city of Vadodara. We have described, we have listened some incident happen in Vadodara because of Sadguru Sri Gopalanand Swami. Now today, Nishkuranand Swami read down the another incident happen in the same city of Vadodara. but this incident something different sadguru gunajitanand swami says in his talks what miracles happen at the time of some great avatars like sri ram sri krishna etc but even more than that the, the miracles happen only because of some devotees of bhagwan swami narayan and not only the devotees but even the childs or children of those devotees this is what the greatness of our satsang now nishkulan swami also described the same thing in this chapter vadi vadodara saher ma पुरिया जे परचा महाराज ते लेखे न आवे लखता एम करया जनना काज सदगुरु निस्कुलानंद स्वामी सेज देर आर मेनी थाउजंड्स ऑफ मिरेकल हैपन इन द सिटी ऑफ वडोदरा हाउ कैन आई डिस्क्राइब ऑल ऑफ दोज इंसिडेंट दिस इज द ग्रेटनेस ऑफ भगवान स्वामी नारायण एंड दैट्स वाई Bhagwan himself says even my greatness cannot be comprehended by without my own self meaning bhagwan is such a thing that he only can understand his glorious greatness as it is otherwise we can understand only a millionth of part of his greatness Now Nishkuran Swami started this 143rd chapter in this way and in the chapter Nishkuran Swami read down the incident happen in Vadodara city only and only because of greatness of Bhagwan Swami Narayan but this incident is unique because some incident described in this chapter mostly this uh, those incident related to some child devotees and that is why they are unique as in last 142 chapter we have listen some incident happen in a house of sadashiv brahman when he invited sadguru gopanand swami and how with gopanand swami maharaj divinely came to his home and how maharaj gave darshan to all of those duties 
along with Sadasiv and his wife. Now the same Sadasiv, he was staunch devotee of Bhagwan Swami Narayan. Now, because of Gopalanand Swami Satsang, Gopalanand Swami is preaching, and all of because of Gopalanand Swami, Sadasiv and also many other devotees, they got some extraordinary spiritual state in our satsang. Just as Sadasiv and his wife, they both engage full time for worshipping Bhagwan Swami Narayan. In the same way, Sadasiv, Sadasiv had one daughter and her name was Umaya. This Umaya, she was also a devotee of Bhagwan Swami Narayan. And because of Bhagwan Swami Narayan's divine grace and some extra divine power, she got status of Samadhi in our satsang. This Samadhi is not an ordinary thing. But when she got this Samadhi and because of Samadhi, she can have darshan of Bhagwan Swami Narayan as well as she can Vis, uh, she can have darshan of many some such other divine things like divine abodes of Bhagwan, and we know there are many different kinds of uh, divine abode of Bhagwan, like Svetdip, Vaikunt, Golok. In this way, many other divine things, meaning what we cannot see, those all things. Umaya Bai can see. This is all because of Bhagwan Swami Narayan. Now, this is not for one day. This is the everyday. Uh, it's become like a routine in the life of Umaya. Every day she sat for meditation on Bhagwan Swami Narayan, and when she contemplate upon the divine form of Bhagwan Swami Narayan and sit directly reach up to Bhagwan Swami Narayan whenever or whatever place Bhagwan said or whatever Bhagwan is doing she can have darshan of Bhagwan Swami Narayan once upon a day she sat in meditation after five minutes as she started to contemplate and ponder over and over again on the divine form of Bhagwan Swami Narayan. Then she got Samadhi. Now in Samadhi, first she, she had uh, darshan of many other divine abodes. Like first she went to heaven, then after in the, in the abode of Sankarji meaning in Kailas, then after in Vaikunt there, Golok, Swedvip, and finally she reached up to Aksardam, the final, the ultimate abar of Bhagwan Swami Narayan. In that abar, meaning in Aksardam, she got darshan of Bhagwan Swami Narayan. Then this is this was become his uh, Bhagwan's divine qualities but Bhagwan whenever Bhagwan wanted to show it to any particular person then only that person can have such power this Umayabai see every day went to Aksardham and have a darshan of Bhagwan Swami Narayan and Bhagwan Swami Narayan also Every day call Umaya Bai when she reach in Aksardam. Bhagwan call her near. Then Bhagwan himself talk to her in many other ways. Once upon a day, when Umaya Bai reached to Maharaj, at that time, Maharaj instructed her, please go back to your home and prepare for lunch. I myself come to your home for lunch. 
Now, whenever I came back from Samadhi, she opened her eyes and immediately she reached into the kitchen and started to make some lunch for Bhagwan. But Bhagwan had instructed her, please make only rotli and some banana. So she had prepared everything for Maharaj and when she finally prayed to Maharaj after making rotli and uh, completing all the other preparations, she prayed to Maharaj, requested Maharaj, please come to my home for a lunch. Then Maharaj divinely appeared in Sadasiv's home and Maharaj started to eat. But at that time, Sadasiv and his wife, they also have darshan of Bhagwan. But nobody knew that how Bhagwan entered into their home. Not Sadasiv, nor his wife, nobody. Only Umayya Bai, as she was instructed by Bhagwan himself in Aksardam, and that's why she only knew that Bhagwan himself divinely appeared in my home. He cannot, uh, Bhagwan is not entered from the door. Now, Sadasiv and his wife, they ask, at what time Bhagwan entered to our home? Because we, the door is already locked and closed. How can one enter into our home? Then Umayyabai explained to her father and mother that how she got, how she got darshan in Aksardham of Bhagwan Swaminarayan and how Bhagwan himself instructed her about preparing this meal for him and that's why Bhagwan himself come to their home. Then when Umayyabai described all this incident that she had a status of Samadhi and she every day went to Aksardam and in Aksardam Bhagwan himself today instructed her and accept his proposal for having meal in her home. Then Sadasiv and his wife they both became very happy because they have a firm belief that Bhagwan Swaminarayan is the Supreme Almighty but Sadasiv and his wife they become very happy because they knew that their daughter she also understood the divine glory of Bhagwan Swaminarayan. Now this is her daily routine every day sat for meditation and went at the place when Bhagwan Swaminarayan himself stay. Once upon a day Again, Umayyabai went into Samadhi in Aksardam and at that time, this time Bhagwan was sitting in Gadda. So Umayyabai went to Gadda in Samadhi. There she got the darshan of Bhagwan, but at that time Sriji Maharaj was eating something meaning that was a time of dinner so Bhagwan was taking his dinner there Umayyabai got darshan of Bhagwan Swaminarayan that Bhagwan is eating now after that Umayyabai as Bhagwan Swaminarayan himself called her near so she went there and she asked for something Umayyabai today said to Bhagwan, please grace me with your any sanctified things. Please give me any prasadi. Then Bhagwan, as Bhagwan had completed his meal and that's why after dinner Bhagwan has washed his hands and with a handkerchief or napkin, Bhagwan dry up his hands and mouth. And Bhagwan throw that 
napkin to Umayya Bai's hand and Bhagwan says accept this as my prasad then Umayya Bai came back from Samadhi and here in Vadodara as she was sat in meditation when she wake up open her eyes the same napkin in her hands now see after this incident she saw the napkin to first her father and mother then after all the other devotees and eventually this napkin is offered to bhagwan swami narayan by the devotees of vadodara and that's why all those devotees when they saw this napkin then they immediately said this is the same rumal this is the same napkin we have offered it to bhagwan swami narayan when last time bhagwan came here in city then umaya bai said yes this is right this is bhagwan swami narayan's napkin and when i got into samadhi then bhagwan himself called me near and as i asked something from bhagwan meaning something as a prasadi so bhagwan himself gave this napkin to me as his prasadi now when all the devotees and all family members they listen and when they witness this divine thing then all got surprised and all understood the divinity and divine power of bhagwan swami narayan in this way many times this umaya bai went into samadhi and in samadhi they got some divine darshan of bhagwan many times she got darshan of divine abodes different abodes of bhagwan and finally many times she got such kind of divine things from bhagwan this time she got napkin after some days the day of utrayan on the day of utrayan she again went in samadhi to bhagwan at the time as according to our hindu ritual on that day all those household devotees they all offer something food or some money or anything they have to some brahmins and in this way bhagwan swami and himself also at at that day giving uh, some food and money to all those brahmins now when umaya bai reached to bhagwan swami and in samadhi then at that time bhagwan himself call her near and bhagwan himself give her some sweet balls and some money and with this divine prasadi from bhagwan swami narayan umaya bai came back from samadhi but as when first umaya bai sat for meditation for samadhi at the time her hands were totally empty there is nothing in her hands but when she came back from samadhi at the time her both hands full of some monies and some meaning at the time there were gold coins so some gold coins and some sweet balls now after this incident she again describe what had happened how she got in samadhi and got darshan of bhagwan swami narayan and how bhagwan gave her some prasad and some money she explained everything to his, her father sadashiv and sadashiv also got very very happiness by this incident and in an in an assembly sadashiv had distributed this prasad to all of the all of the devotees and describe this incident that bhagwan swaminarayan has 
a divine power and not bhagwan himself but even such divine power shown by such child devotees this is the divine power of bhagwan swami narayan what happened in the case of other avatars like sri ram sri krishna and other that when they himself engage in such kind of activity then such divine actions can be possible but in case of bhagwan swami narayan as he is the cause of everything he is the lord of lords and that's why as he is almighty the supreme being and that's why only because of his desire his divine wishes not only devotees but even children of his devotee can have such divine power and divine quality so in this way sadguru niskuran and swami describe us such divine incident happen in some devotee's life now many other incident happen to umaya bai as well as some other devotees but we will continue in later sri ganshyam maharaj ni jai सरे नहीं जो विसारी जुगल चरण सोल चिन्ह जेह नजर समीप रहो अमारिये नजर समीप रहो अमारिये बुलगन श्याम महाराज नीजे हरि कृष्ण महाराज नीजे स्वामी नारायण भगवान नीजे सुप्रीम ओम माइडी और बिलोवेड गन श्याम महाराज और बिलोवेड पूज्य पाद गुरु जी पूज्य भगत जी इन ऑल यू डिवोटीज जय स्वामी नारायण देयर इज अ सेवन लेटर वर्ड आउट देयर दैट मोटिवेट्स millions and millions of people to fight in the army a seven word a seven word word that motivates the whole world to live by it what is this word it's freedom everyone each and every one of us seeks freedom some way or another it's just something natural to us it's an inclination that's natural our soul its dna you can say is integrated with this you can say type of inclination where any time we're bound by something we feel like becoming free from it freedom from an independent nation i can say take it maybe about 70 years ago uh or even more India was under the reign of Britain due to that Mahatma Gandhi and all his other members candidates fought to the limit not physically but 
through boycotts, through different, different acts to get freedom for India. And finally, it was done. India was free from the hands, the clutches, the chains of Britain. Not only that, but freedom to express our own opinion. Take for example Martin Luther King Jr. who gave his speech, I Have a Dream speech. He expressed his feelings towards that any race, African Americans or Caucasians, everyone is equal. There is no difference. There is no difference in a certain manner. He was talking about. After his speech, many many people were inspired, and due to that, it revolutionized the whole, you can say, viewpoint or perspective of people looking at other people in a different manner due to their skin color and now you can see due to his speech due to his inspiration there is you can say no kind of discrimination between this certain colored person can go here and this certain colored person cannot go here we can even truly say that Bhagwan himself came inside of Martin Luther King King and spoke these words and due to these words millions and millions of people's hearts were touched and turned around but that's an example of freedom freedom to express our own opinion and Martin Luther King did that and due to that he became successful and lastly for you teenagers out there freedom to get away from your parents Something that you seek when you're going through high school from your 9th grade to your 10th, 10th to your 11th, and 11th to your 12th, and finally 12th to your college. You can't wait to graduate from high school. Why? Not because you successfully graduated with good grades and pretty much you passed high school. No. You're happy because you get to go away to your college which is out of state away from your parents away from your home such kind of freedom we seek it's a very very you can say minute but if you think about it you are seeking freedom for your parents for those years and years of chores that they've given you for those years and years of punishments if you've done something wrong or just kind of like a monitor your parents have been monitoring you on and off asking you when you're going down the stairs and out the door where are you going when are you coming back why are you going here will you be back this time I need you back this time all these kinds of questions are bounding you with chains and making you very very uncomfortable due to that now it's your time to leap into college, which is away from your parents, seeking freedom. These are all examples of freedom. We seek them, we struggle for them day in and day out. It's a very, very common thing on a daily basis. Over the past hundred years, man has worked hard to improve the quality of life by attaining all types of such freedoms. Many would even agree that mankind has the most freedom now than at any point in history. Right now you can see that we are able to do whatever we like as long as we stay under a certain kind of infrastructure of the nation that you live under. You're free to do whatever you like. You're free to speak. You're free to walk. You're free to do other than other countries like other countries there's many restrictions United States is very liberal on some basis especially how it expresses freedom to its citizens yet there is one freedom that has not fully been conquered you can say or we have not experienced in our life 
there's one freedom, one type of freedom, which is very difficult for us to attain. We try, or if we don't try, we're unable to see. But this freedom, which is unable, you can even not even get it via paying a certain amount. You cannot even attain this type of freedom by having a nation's army on your side. You cannot attain this kind of freedom by having all the money in the world and paying for it. Well, what is this freedom? Ever since this body, you can say, or this soul has taken the form of this body. And for the past millions and millions of lives, we are bound, we are chained by our innate nature. What do I mean? Natures like ego, jealousy, stubbornness, anger, lust, greed. These natures have been bounding us and have been pretty much keeping us in one certain area that we are unable to spread our wings and fly. It's because it's all because of our nature and we have not attained this freedom even if we have an army in our side we still haven't defeated that you can say freedom that we want or attain that freedom that we want even if we have all the money in the world we still can't buy the freedom that we want which is to become free from these natures these innate natures are actual culprits meaning they've been binding us and blinding us for time in and out all this time whether we realize it or not it's the truth these are the culprits that are breaking governments are they're starting wars between nations igniting arguments between one another you can even say, you can say that these are the natures which are hurting others more than we want to hurt others. Or we don't even know and others are being hurt due to these natures. How could we get freedom from these natures? That's our question for today. We've seen many, many types of freedoms. We're experiencing daily these freedoms that I have explained to you above but freedom from our nature how could that happen Bhagwan Swaminarayan a practical God a God who is so much so above and beyond everything yet is also daily in and out in our lives so much so that practically he lives in such a manner that he fits right inside of our shoes and he thinks that how could this person become free from any nature and due to that he gives a very very positive viewpoint in his Vachnamrut. Maharaj in his Vachnamrut Gurudha middle chapter 37th Vachnamrut states that there is a question asked and then the main question that we want to have is that how can these such innate natures be eradicated? Maharaj is asking. No one could answer. So Maharaj said, such natures as what, as I explained before, lust, anger, greed, ego, so on and so forth. Whatever one has, one has to just look at oneself, no one else. But how could these natures be defeated? It's a good question. No santos in the assembly could answer. So Maharaj himself states that the answer to that is that when the Satpurush, meaning the Ekantik Satpurush, the great God-realized saint who has no flaws, who is beyond any of these natures, gives guidance on how to eradicate such swabhaus or natures, if a person has total faith in those words, in his words, if he has deep affection for the Satpurush giving the guidance, and no matter how painfully strong the Satpurush's words seem, if he accepts those words, then 
that person's innate nature would be destroyed. In the spiritual world, world, everything is done through the Akantic Sadhgurush. No matter if you want to become Akantic, no matter if you want to become beyond this world, no matter if you want to become great even in this world, let's say, if you want to become talented via attaining a lot of skills, a lot of qualities, or if you want to become very, very, you can say, well qualified as a satsangi, or if you want to attain a lot of qualities of a sadhu, everything is done via the Ekantik Satpurush. There is no other way. Just like how <clears throat> some cities only have one way to go in and one way to go out. In the same way in satsang, to completely attain Bhagwan or to do any of the following as I mentioned below before, one has to go through the Satpurush. And if one wants to get out of satsang, if one wants to leave satsang, then the, all, the same road is by you can say mangling the Satpurush or insulting the Satpurush or you can even say having demonic thoughts about the Satpurush this will kick you out of Satsang the Satpurush is there to guide one he's kind of like a catalyst he pretty much enforces his or he helps you boost your strength your inner strength he helps you realize your strength and he boosts you towards God He's a catalyst, but it can also go the other way if you go the other way or you go in a negative manner. So Maharaj states here by giving a short, simple answer that if one, if the Satpurush gives guidance on one's about, if one has faith, if one has affection, and no matter how hard, harsh, harshly or painfully that Satpurush says something, doesn't accept it in a negative manner he says it is my fault and he changes it this is the only way that one can become free from one's nature this is how important it is to you can say take refuge underneath the Akantik Satpurush we can go back in time in Sadhguru Gunathidhan Swami Swami's era where he had many many incidents in Ekantik Satpurush Satpurush beyond any of these qualities mentioned or any qualities of Maya. Such a Purush, such a saint experienced so many different, different people's, you can say, insults, experiences, people's, you can say, innate natures. But how did he deal with it? How did he extract the good from that person? And pretty much, how did he help eradicate such people's natures? That's what we want to look at today. Well, at one time, Swami had arrived in a nearby village called Malia by Junagar. Now, there, there was a devotee by the name of Ramo sitting underneath a tree. Ramo had the addictions of alcohol and eating meat. He was completely, completely just deteriorated from addictions. Each and every nature lied in Ramo. Sadhguru Gunathinan Swami was walking by and he saw Ramo. And obviously the great saint could see that this person is in trouble. And so he was addicted to many things. He had many natures. They could see. They're like x-rays. They can see right through you. What you're thinking. And Swami spotted Ramo and walked towards him. Just by there. And he asked Ramo. Will a lion eat a ladu or jalebi? What did Swami ask? Would a lion eat a, a ladu or jalebi? Ladu or jalebi are sweets. They're for humans. They're not for any animals. I'm sure all of you know. We can even take the format of would a lion eat a cupcake? 
so you can get a better perspective. Ramo said, no, of course not, Swami. Swami said, why not? Ramo replied, because it's not food, it's not his food, meaning it's not the lion's food. Then Swami replied back, he countered, how strange is it that a man eats an animal's food and he drinks what should not be drunk? Are these the characteristics of a man? Swami asked. Ramo, shocked, appalled by Swami's question, he could not believe it. No one till this time had ever come, came up to him and asked him such a question, so much so that penetrated his heart deeply that he felt that he needed to change his nature right there and then. How did it initiate? How did it happen? The Satpurusha's guidance. Satpurusha spotted that innate nature and he went for it. Well, Rama, obviously, we can say that he didn't have faith, maybe not so much so, or affection for Swami at that very point. But Swami's impressive aura, Swami's impressive nature was so, so, you can say, impending on Ramo that Ramo's mind changed completely. He fell to Swami's feet and he said, Swami, I will give up all my addictions. I will not eat meat. I will not drink alcohol. I will not do anything that you will not like, Swami. Please take me underneath your refuge. Simple words said by Swami, yet so effective. So effective that for years and years, Ramo was pretty much sitting in a pool of alcohol and eating meat and doing all kinds of addictions. Yet, Swami's one question completely changed Ramo's perspective and completely destroyed Ramo's addictions. This is the strength of a powerful saint like Sadhguru Gunatidan Swami. Not only that, but at another village, Swami was sitting in the center of the village there and there was a sabha occurring and Swami announced that we're going to give one cart full of millet meaning bajri no lot in Gujarati and millet in English to whoever gives up their addiction to alcohol, to opium, to tobacco or any kinds of addictions so on and so forth with the promise of receiving millet, many people took vows to become pretty much addiction-free satsangis, devotees, because they knew that Swami was the Mahant of Junagar Mandir, so Swami would provide if He really said it. So many, many people took niyams that I will give up tobacco, or I will give up alcohol, or I will give up eating meat. And Swami accepted all these names and said, your millet will be given to you. One year later, Swami came back to that same village and someone in the crowd asked in that sabha that Swami, you had told us that you would give us one cart full of millet if we gave up our addiction. Swami said, you are right, but let me ask you a question. Before you gave up your addiction to me, how much money were you spending, meaning how many rupees were you spending on your addiction in a year? He said about 40 to 50 rupees. In that time, that was a lot. Then he asked another person, Swami asked another person in sitting in the sabha, well, let me ask you, how many carts of millet can you get from 40 or 50 rupees. The person said at least two carts. Well, Swami said that whoever has given up their addiction for this one year, I will give you and provide you two carts of millet because you had spent that much on your addiction and now it goes the other way and here's two carts of millet and Swami called for the millet 
and the millet arrived and gave it to the devotees you can say to these people who had given up their addictions but this inspired so many people around that village that hundreds and hundreds of people came to Swami and started to give up their addiction this is the way that Sadhguru Gunathidan Swami operated he operated on such a level or simple simple methods were shown or you can say simple simple talks were given yet great great changes were you can say implemented into the lives of such kinds of people who we remember today you can see two things from this you can say prasang here number one this ekantik satpurush's takat or strength and number two if one has faith in guidance or if one has faith in such satpurush and follows the vachanamrut exactly then one's nature can easily be eradicated but it all starts with faith and then affection and then finally when that purush gives very very tough words one is able to tolerate them and accept them in a positive manner i remember our puja guruji today now we looked at nan santos 200 years ago but if we want to see a nan sant in this era like our sadguru muktanand swami then there is no other sant compared to our puja guruji how so well in our bal sabha <clears throat> puja rushi swami has explained this story about rasik bai gondalia this prasang probably happened i want to say 6 months ago and rasik bai gondalia was from the uh, city of surat in india and pretty much just shortly i want to explain and narrate the story that he was very very ill and due to that he was an author this was his background and many many santos knew him but uh he seek the darshan of puja guruji and puja guruji went there to give him his darshan and he was very very ill and it was his time to leave this body and to go to akshardham but there was one problem that his body would not leave meaning his soul would not leave his body so puja guruji through his antaryami <clears throat> quality he saw that rasik bhai has attachment still for his family due to this he is unable or the soul is unable to leave the body because it's still attached here in this world so puja guruji told rasik bhai that you still have some kind of attachment towards your family members if you look deep down you'll find it and what guruji did was takur ji guruji's idol which he keeps with him always was wearing a moti mara that day puja guruji took off the moti mara from takur ji and gave it to rasik bhai in his hand and he told rasik bhai that when you have broken this you can say bandhan or this chain that you're attached to then wear this moti bara and bhagwan will take you to his akshardham within 24 hours simple a moti mara how can a moti mara be worn and due to that one's body leaves or one soul leaves for akshardham look at the strength of such an ekantik satpurush how can this be possible it's beyond our imagination but it is in our imagination it is reality it is what it is and it did happen so what had happened was rasik bhai thought what is bounding me and he had one he knew about one thing that he had attachment towards his relative members i'm not exactly sure of the exact person but he had some kind of attachment towards his relative members and due to that his soul was still here he he was a very gnani bhakta he'd read many many books he had read the vachanamrut he had a good abhyas of vachanamrut and due to that he destroyed that you can say thing he was bound to 
within that 24 hours that Puja Guruji visited him and he wore the Moti Mara and called his family members and explained this whole story that I am explaining to you right now to his family members that Puja Guruji came, he gave me this Moti Mara, he told me that when I will be ready to go to Akshadam, wear the Moti Mara. He wore the Moti Mara and now I am going to Akshadam. He explained to his family that was around the bedside. His family, not depressed but happy that he is going to Akshadam, accepted his words and within 24 hours, just as how Puja Guruji promised, Rasik Bhai Gondalia went to Akshadam. His soul went to Akshadam. But what does this prove? What are we trying to show here? What is the point? The point is that that person, that Bhagat had some kind of attachment. And when the Akantik Satpurush guided him, that person had faith and affection and followed the Akantik Satpurush's words. Due to that, just within 24 hours, he went to Akshadam. This is the Pratap, or you can say this is the power of such kind of purush. So the main thing is that don't seek freedom from your parents so much so. Don't even seek freedom from, you can say, other sorts of things like expressing our own opinion. We don't have to go at the level of fighting for our country, but such kind of freedoms, don't seek them. Seek the freedom to become free from such kinds of natures so one can attain Bhagwan. And the only way to do that is to associate with the Ekantik Sat Purush, like our Puja Guruji. Through his life, through his example, we can see that simple methods yet powerful messages are passed on and millions and millions of people attain Akshar Dham. There's no other, you can say, sant like this that we are experiencing or that we are in his, you can say, wave and we are experiencing as of right now. The main thing to do is that everyone's seen an essence stick, right? The essence stick, when it's not, when you haven't lit it, doesn't have, it doesn't give off a smell. But when you light the essence stick, it gives off a scent. And when it comes to the bottom and it's done, then the scent is gone. In the same way, while the Ekantik Satpurush is pragat here on this earth in the human form, we should take advantage of his presence and completely do what we have to, meaning destroy our natures and attain Bhagwan. Because when that essence is gone, then what will you do? Saying this, my humble Jai Swami Narayan. Shri Patim Shri Dharam Vishware Vasudeva Mare Madhavam Kesavam Kamdam Karam Si Swami Narayanam Nilakantam Bajeshikan Shamara